so we're on our backs to begin. Um, don't worry if you, I'm um, just saying so you no know, for recording, it's just me that's being recorded. So we are going to together bend our knees and plant our feet. And go ahead and walk your feet in, your heels in as close as you can towards your bottom. And if you have any tenderness you know, on the low back, you can always uh, slide a blanket underneath your back there. We're gonna do pelvic tilts. And so I'll just invite you to do your best here. Pelvic tilts is a really subtle movement. So if you haven't you know, done it with me before, and this is your first time doing it, just take your time. And so I'll invite you to either take your hands to your belly or to leave them at your side. I'm gonna have them at my body just so that if you're using um, me as a visual example, I'm not blocking my hips. So what we're gonna do is as you inhale, you're gonna lift the just the low back away from the floor. So this is the anterior tilt. We're lifting our low back away from the floor. Sometimes it helps to stick a hand under there so you can feel how there's space between your low back and the floor. Your belly stretches long and your hips and your inner thighs relax. And then as you exhale, you're gonna press your low back into the floor. So imprint the mat. Your hips are staying on the earth. Engage your glutes, engage your inner thighs, engage your core, draw the floating ribs in. And then as you inhale, you're gonna lift the low back gently away from the floor, create that space between the body and the mat. And then as you exhale, curl your tailbone up and in, and draw your floating ribs in with them into center. So there's that little core movement. Your inhalation, low back lifts away from the floor, tip of the tailbone draws down. So it might help for you to leave a hand under at least at first. So that as you exhale, you can feel your low back press into your hand there. Engage your core, draw your ribs in, engage your inner thighs. As you inhale, lifting low back up and away from the floor, stretching belly, an expansion of the belly. So that as you exhale, press your low back into the floor, floating ribs draw in, squeeze gently. And earn like this. You might even have your hands at the top of the pelvis. Sometimes that can facilitate the movement wherever it works for you. Exhale, curling in, engaging into the inner thighs. The abdomen slightly contracts. As you inhale, there's an expansion. As you exhale, curl it up and in, pressing low back towards the floor. There's a subtle core engagement. We're going to do this at your own pace about five more times. So inhaling, lifting low back up and away from the floor. Exhaling, curl tailbone up and in. And an inhalation, an arch, a lift away from the floor, and an exhale, a rounding, curling in, pressing low back into. Okay. Feel free to really take your time with your breath. And so when we come to the physical practice after a pretty deep contemplation like that, it's, it's kind of ironic because now we're asking ourselves to totally focus on our body and our breath. So there's a saying in yoga that the only way out is through. Right? So we're going into, into, into our breath and our body as a way to actually see it as a very beautiful part of ourselves, but not our entire self. That there's something beyond this here. Taking one more. All right, go ahead and relax your back, relax your arms at your sides. And now we'll get into a little bit of bigger movement. So plant your palms into your sides, ground down through the soles of the feet. Inhale, lift your hips off of the floor and sweep your arms up overhead. So stretch and reach your fingers away from you. Curl your tailbone up and in as you exhale nice and slow, begin to lower your upper, middle, lower back tips and your hands or leaves down to the floor. Ground down through the soles of the feet. Inhale, sweep your arms up, reach your hips up, stretch and reach fingers away from you. And then as you exhale, curl your tailbone up and in nice and slow, lower all the way down. See if you can time it so that your hips and your hands lower at about the same time. And then Reach down through the feet, lift your hips up, stretch and reach fingers away. Curl tailbone up and in, exhalation nice and slow, lower upper, middle, lower back, hips, and hands. And we're going to take that three more times. Get your breath, hips lift up, fingers stretch away, curl tailbone up and in, 
uh, exhalation nice and slow, lower upper, middle, lower back, hips, and hands. And like a wave with your breath, initiating the movement, inhaling, you lift up, exhalation, slowly lower all the way down. And inhale, you rise up. And then exhale, nice and slow, lower it all the way down. Good. Once you're here, relax the shoulders, let the, the hips melt to the floor, take a full breath. And then we're gonna hug the knees into the chest. You can hold at the shins, you can hold from the hamstrings, whichever works for you. Maybe you're like, oh, you know what? I really need to straighten my legs. You could do that. This is our freeze down movement. So I feel like straightening my legs and kind of rolling my ankles. You can have your knees bent, squeezed in, rocking side to side or being still. Or maybe you do a combination of both in the next three breaths or so. So you're rocking your knees in, straightening, extending your legs, rolling your ankles out, scrunching your toes. And you're just breathing in and out. All right. Plant your feet for a moment. Have your hands planted at your side. Shoulders draw back and down. Curl your tailbone up and in so that now we're going to stay with an imprinted spine. So the low back is pressing into the floor. Lift your legs up to tabletop, which is where the knees are above your hips. Your ankles are just slightly higher than your knees. Flex your toes. You're going to draw your toes back to your knees. Take your arms up with the palms facing forward. So we're gonna do playful bug. It's a little bit of core work. So we're gonna start with just the legs and then I'm gonna invite you to take the arms in if you wish. So you can have your arms up or you can release your hands at your sides if that just works better for you. So inhaling here, as you exhale, just extend your left leg out. So I have it up kind of high. You can stick with that or you can lower it a little bit more. The more you lower it, the little bit more intense it'll be. And then you'll inhale, bring it back through center. Exhale, extend your right leg out. Inhale, bring it back in, curl to one up and in. Exhale, extend left leg. Good, inhale, send it back in. Exhale, extend the right. Check in that your low back is pressing into the floor. Inhale, bring it back in. Exhale, left leg. Inhale, in. Exhale, right. Core is engaged. I'm gonna to start to add on the opposite arm and leg. So the left leg comes out, the right arm reaches up overhead. Good, and you'll inhale, collect that all back through center, nice and slow. Exhale, right leg, left arm up overhead. Good, inhale, bring it all the way back in. Your breath out into the engagement. So maybe you're playing with lowering a little bit more, but not in a way that's gonna strain your low back at all, okay? Exhale, extend any amount that you need to. Good, you inhale, you collect back in. Exhale, extend and reach. Awesome, breathing in and out. Take a rest at any point. If this is just not doable for you, you could try it out. And then you can also take a rest, close your eyes and visualize, visualize yourself doing it. Okay, that's a really, really powerful practice. Visualization, Let's bring it back in. Exhale, extend, good, inhale. We're gonna do three more to each side. If you're still here, and inhale, bring it back. Exhale to extend, inhale back, exhale. Good, you're moving at your own pace. Two more. Curl your tailbone up and in, cross that little back to the floor. Extend. Now on our final round, so take your time, bend the knees in, release your arms, squeeze your knees into your chest. And you can again rock side to side, or maybe you're totally still. You can even play with gently opening and closing your knees, stretching the inner thigh. Good. All right. We're going to reach for our strap. That's mine all the way over here for some reason. So if you don't have a strap, don't worry about it. I'll guide you through in another way. But first, if you do have a strap, bend your left leg wherever you are, extend your right leg, and take the strap just underneath the ball mount of your foot. And give yourself plenty of slack. So no loops are necessary. If you have one already, don't worry about it. And you have your hands towards either side of your strap. If you don't have a strap, I'm gonna invite you to just reach your hands up for now. 
And then you can always catch hold of the hamstring or calf or elsewhere, right? So invitation to keep your left leg bent or extend the left leg along on the mat. So you're just kind of checking in, take a breath here, notice how your hamstrings feel. The reason why I might have you still reaching up to the sky like this, if you are without a strap, is because what we're gonna do is we're going to send the right leg forward as you inhale, as forward as you want it to go. And as you exhale, the leg goes up overhead. But what I want you to do is give your, actually, if you do have a loop, I'll have you get rid of that loop. So I want you to give yourself as much slack as possible. So you're gonna bring your arms up overhead as you exhale. Now, you might have a super bent knee, not a problem at all. You don't have to bring your leg this close. You might be somewhere over here, over here, it doesn't matter. Your arms come up overhead as much as they're comfortable. And then as you inhale, you let your leg come back forward. So you're giving yourself a lot of slack here. Exhale up, inhale forward. It's a little bit of like a play, ebb and flow. We're warming up the joints. We're warming up the core. And we're moving our lymphatic system with the pumping action. Yes. So if you're like mm, easy peasy, I'm going to give myself a little bit of less, a little bit less slack. Feel free to give yourself a little bit less slack. And maybe you're going a little deeper. So we're just gonna do this a few more times. I always like to wrap the strap around a couple of times so I have a lot of stability. Don't hit yourself in the head with this metal loop. <laughs> there you are, you're just playing. You can have a big bend in your knees. So I'll show you what that might be like. You have a big bend. So you're bending your elbows too. Yep, just a few more times. Okay, good. And then wherever you are, embrace your hamstring stretch, wherever that may be. So now if you don't have a strap, you'll interlace your hands somewhere at the leg. And you will relax your shoulders as much as you can. Have any bend in that knee that you need. Flex your right toes. Gently pull down on the strap or keep your toes working to your knee. Reach out through that left leg. If the left foot is planted to the floor, you're really pressing into the foot. And we're going to take three more breaths here. Awesome. When you finish your exhale, take both sides of the strap into your right hand. So if you don't have a strap or if you have a towel and it's just kind of far away and you don't want to use it for this part, I'm going to show you what you might do. We're going to take the leg out to the right. You're going to have your right leg bent, hand to the shin, flex your toe, and draw that right knee out to the side like so. Otherwise, with your strap, both sides of the hands into the strap, knee can be bent to any amount. Left hand, wherever you're at, is plugging at your side, left shoulder drawing to the mat. And as you exhale, draw that right leg out to the right. Keep your right toes flexed to the knee. Now your right elbow can be straight or you maybe bend your elbow enough so that you can use it like a kickstart at the floor. Good. Keep your left hip plugging into the earth. If it lifts up and you can't put it down, don't worry about it. You're just working it down. And what might happen is you'll feel your inner thighs might start to tremble a little bit. You're engaging your core. Reach out through that left leg or press into the foot. And breathe here. You can look to the sky or past your left shoulder. We have two more breaths. Okay. Take that leg back through center. Take the left hand to the strap or left hand at the shin. Right hand relaxes out to the side. We're going to ebb and flow here too first. You're letting your leg open. So the left arm crosses the body with or without the strap. To the right, inhale, exhale, cross it over into a twist to any amount. Inhale, open it back up. Keep a little engagement in your legs and your core so you're not kind of flopping around here. Exhale into a twist. Inhale, it opens up as much as you can with that left arm crossing the midline. Exhale into a twist. So some dynamic movement. Inhale, open, exhale, twist. Take that two more times. Inhale, open. Exhale, twist. Maybe you're opening up a little bit more each time, but no pressure to do so. Now we're going to embrace the twist. So if you have the left hand at the strap, that right leg might be long all the way to your left as far as it needs to go. You might be way up here. 
as long as you're feeling this opening in the side body, maybe a little twist around the rib cage, no worries. Otherwise, you can go as far to the left as you'd like to. That right hip can totally lift off the floor. Left leg goes long now if it isn't already, and the left toes flop towards the left. Left thigh opens towards the left. So if your knee is bent, you'd be here. You can always bend the bottom knee too if it's a bit much and take both knees stacked on top of the other for this twist. Yeah. It's not unusual to feel a pretty, pretty deep stretch across the IT band in the right leg and in the inner thigh. Option to turn your gaze past your right shoulder and we'll take another breath there. Right, start to bend that knee if it isn't already. Draw that right leg back to center. Bend the knee into your chest and just for two full breaths, interlace your hands around the shin or the hamstring. Release the strap. Pull your knee in and take two big breaths in and out. All right, release that right foot, either both legs bent or Stravasana legs, legs out long, whichever works for you. Make any little adjustments. You can rest here comfortably for a few moments. Disengage here. And just notice both sides of the body, right side, left side, right leg, left leg, right hip, left hip. And then when you're ready, bend your legs, plant your right foot, extend your left leg to the side. So you're either reaching your arms up on your pseudo strap, or you have your hands wrapped around your strap. Give yourself a lot, a lot of slack at first. Okay. And you're gonna inhale, let that left leg come as far forward as it likes to. Exhale, arms up overhead as much as is comfortable, legs up overhead now. If you're bending your knee, I didn't give this instruction early on. If your knees super bent, you're almost doing more like a chest opener because you're bending your arms, you're bending your elbows instead of bringing them totally up overhead. Because the more you bring your arms up overhead, you'll notice that the stretch deepens unless you want to lose the strap for that part, even if you do have one and play with bringing the arms up overhead and the leg forward. Arms up overhead, like that. Yeah, just ebbing and flowing and breathing as you can. Right leg can stay bent or it can extend. fluid movements and breath. Think about two more. Good, now we'll embrace our hamstring stretch. So go ahead and walk your hands up as far up the strap as you'd like to or interlace your hands around your hamstring. Knee can be super bent, not worried about having a straight leg. Pull the right toes down to the knee. Relax your jaw, draw the shoulders back down and back and breathe nice, long and deep breaths in and out. Try to let the tongue gently fall away from the roof of the mouth. Okay, now we'll take both sides of the strap into the left hand, right hand out to the side, plant the palm down like an anchor. You can always have a bent left leg, left hand to the shin, flex your toes. So we're gonna cross or open, excuse me, open the left leg out to the side to any amount, but still keeping your right hip plugging. So if that means you pull the leg back in a little bit more so that right hip can plug down to the floor, then do so. Leg can be straight even if it has a bent. Hand and arm can be extended long, or you can bend that left elbow on up so the left elbow can release to the floor like a kickstand. So if you have the shin, that kind of happens naturally. Good, and breathe. This one tends to be kind of challenging for our stabilizer muscles. So embracing little shakes, as long as it's not painful, just breathing into it. And if you'd like, you could draw your cheek to the right and breathe two more breaths.
neck, inhale, slowly bring that left leg back through center, right hand to the strap or at the shin. And you're going to inhale, draw the leg open. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Inhale, leg open, exhale into the twist. So you're kind of moving and flowing here. It could be really small movements back and forth or they can start to increase. You're just opening up the back, opening up your hips and your IT band. So if you have the strap, you're taking the leg out into the twist with the strap and then opening up with the right arm crossing over the body. So just a slow movement. Your right toes are kind of rocking right to left as you're opening here. Good, breathing in and out. Take that one more time and then you'll embrace the twist over to your right. So remember, if you have your hand at the shin, the knee is bent, you can always bend up your right leg, take a, a stacked twist or keep your right leg long. And in that case, the right toes flop over to the right, externally rotating the right thigh, extending into that left leg, or you can have a little bend or a deep, deep bend into the knee. The left arm can come out like a half T or goal post. You can draw your gaze to your left and breathe into this twist. Good, bend your left leg. Take your time to come back through center. Release the strap. Bring it off to the side and rest here for one moment, one breath of totally disengaging. When you're ready, roll to one side, slowly press yourself up into a seat and then into tabletop position where we'll move into integration movements or cat and cows. We'll have wrists below shoulders, knees, our hip distance, spread the fingers nice and wide. Tucking the toes when you're ready. As you inhale, lift your heart, send the tip of the tailbone to the sky, shoulders back and down. As you exhale, toss the feet press, curl tailbone up and in, pop the upper back, gazing inward. Your inhale brings you right into the cow shape, tuck toes, hips to sky, shoulders back and down. And your exhale, round it through the spine, puff the upper back, gaze up and in. And we'll take that about three more times, like a wave with your breath, breathing in, heart lift, breathing out to round it up and in. And breathing in, tucking toes, heart lift, shoulders back and down. Breathing out, tops of feet press, curling to one up and in, gazing in. The last one, feel free to really exaggerate the movement if the body wants to. Beautiful. Come on back to neutral spine. Turn this into a child's pose. Knees can come about as wide as the mat. Two big toes touch. Send your hips back to the heels. They don't need to touch, but they're just working there. Walk your arms out long and let your forehead touch down. So you can always have a block or another prop underneath your forehead. You can even take one fist on top of the other and let the forehead rest there. Sending the hips back towards your heels. And we'll stay here for about half a minute or so 30 seconds long this is kind of like our intro into we'll switch into our yin practice if you'd like you can create the sound on the exhalation About two or three more breaths. From here, we're going to make our way onto our belly so you can kind of lift up 
into tabletop and then come down to your forearms and kind of sliver or slide your legs out to come into the belly. And we're gonna go into a yin pose of Sphinx, but I'm gonna offer a few modifications. So take care of yourself if you have tender you know, hips, take a blanket under your pelvis. You could take a blanket underneath your elbows. Um, you just comfort measures wherever you need them. If you have things around you, bring them in. Otherwise, some guidelines here, wrapping the fingers around our upper arm bones will help us to really narrow the stance of our elbows because we want them below the shoulders. So that's what you could start by doing that. Release your forearms down to the floor. Few things. So the closer that the elbows are to either side of your chest, that's going to make it a deeper back bend. So if that feels like a, a lot, you really want to um, pull back from that because we're going to be holding. So we want to find a sense of passivity and relaxation in the body here. So that might mean you walk your elbows up quite a bit to any amount that you need to so you can lessen your back bend. So that's an option. You can always decide to do that as we're holding. We're going to take this for two to three minutes. You can always come out of the pose and come back in if you need to. So we're starting now, by the way. So I'm just talking to you some guidelines. So if you're already in it, you're like, how long? Yeah, so go ahead and go in. A final option, if this is just all too much, you could take one hand on top of the other and let your forehead rest down. So just by doing this, this is technically a back bend. I've had students in yin classes tell me that they felt a lot of relief here um, just by doing this pose. So you can come there at any point or you can go there right now. One final thing, head can stay lifted or you can let your chin drop to your chest and your shoulders shrug up to your ears. If that feels passive, relaxing, sweet even, you could do that. So for many years, that actually felt like it created more tension for me. So if that's you, you might want to stay lifted up out of it and keep your shoulders gently drawing away from your ears. And that would be the, as much muscular effort as you're using here. Go ahead and scan the body and see if there's anywhere that you can relax. So let your legs relax, your heels relax, your glutes relax, your belly softens to the floor, your eye sockets relaxing cheeks and jaw, breath. And we hold the in posture. You can always deepen the breath at any point to help to bring you back into the moment. Otherwise, we seek stillness. So you can just let your breath be as it is. Remember, we're not here to push through any pain. So if you feel that, and you can't breathe comfortably, that's a sign that it might be too much. So slowly back out, take a rest. You can always come back in. Just under a minute remaining here. When you're ready, you just slowly start to walk your elbows up until you can feel that back bend releasing and then you can rest. I'm gonna invite us to go into a crocodile shape from here. So letting one cheek rest to the mat, doesn't matter which, we're gonna let that left leg slide up as much as it can with the bent knee. So maybe you're a little higher than hip height or just in line with hip height or maybe you're much lower. Left knee slides up, you're on the inner edge of your left foot and maybe onto your right cheek. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. You can even use your hands like a pillow and let your right leg totally relax. 
feel the support of your chest and belly against the floor. Passive, supported, just being here. And when you're ready, let that left leg slide back down. We're going to maybe switch cheeks if that feels okay for you. Let the right leg slide up to half crocodile on the other side. And totally release and relax as much as you can and towards the floor. And then let that right leg come back long. We'll take the hands towards either side of the chest. We'll come up into a brief cobra for transition. So elbows squeeze back, press into your palms. Inhale, lift up into your baby cobra, reach out through your leg. Stay there for a breath out. Inhale when you're ready. And then exhale, tuck the toes and press yourself back into a tabletop. Sit back briefly onto your bottoms. Next, the yin shape is butterfly. So this is the shape. If butterfly is just a lot for your hips or your back, you can actually take this laying flat. So you would do your butterfly on your back if you'd like to. I'm just considering that we are holding this pose and then you can tuck a block to either side of your um, thighs. So to the outer thighs. I have one block I would demonstrate for you, but my child is obsessed with my block. So they're always missing somewhere in the house. I'm going to show you what you could do and you maybe can use what you have too um, with bolster or another block so you can do something like that whether or not you choose to go to your back so you could do that while you're seated right okay so you have something supporting your outer thighs you can lean into that as you open up so when we do yin our fascia starts to kind of melt away from the muscle opening and creating more space so that's why when we hold something in a really passive way so we're not pushing ourselves to our deepest place things start to open up. So then you will drop into the support. So if that's what you are doing, take that whether you're laying flat or seated. If you're already there, cool, settle in. Otherwise, one more option would be to either stay upright in butterfly, let your chin tuck to your chest, or to slowly round yourself in. So your elbows can stay inside the body or you know, holding onto your toes really lightly. Elbows can come to the front of the shins. I always like to have the palms facing up in the seated position and kind of just let the top of the hands rest in the floor or another prop like a pillow or an additional block or nothing on the floor, it's fine. This is a really signal of passivity in the wrists and the fingers and the hands, really sensing they're gripping, they're grasping, they're writing, they're typing, they're driving. And if you're on your back and you wanna take maybe one hand to the belly, one hand to your heart, you can do that. It's finding your yin shape. And we're here for about three minutes. If you ever find yourself done with the pose, you can always come to lay flat on your back in Shavasana. And I'm just breathing and relaxing there. You don't have to go to your deepest place at first. You can always go in a little bit more as we're holding here. So if it is difficult for you to be still for this long, it might help to do a practice like counting the breath. So I'm going to invite you to do that. It's totally optional. Inhaling for a count of four and exhaling for a count of four. So you'll inhale, count yourself, inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, like so. So go ahead and count the breath if that resonates with you.
a reminder to check in with the body and scanning any areas that may be clinging or holding that you don't need for the shape. And if they are ready to see if you can invite them to soften and relax. It could be your fingers, it could be your neck, it could be your shoulders or your chest or even your belly, anywhere. Noticing that there might be stories that you have about your body, about it, the reason it is tight or achy or in pain. <clears throat> and doing your best to observe those stories with compassion. Or remaining just under a minute, you can stay exactly as you are. If and only if the body is inviting you to go deeper, feel free. It also might be an opportunity to pull out a little bit and do less so you can relax more. Make a breath yourself. Okay, and then if you are in a seated position, if you're on your backs, actually, I'll invite you to stay. If you're in the seated position, you're going to really slowly start to walk your way out of the folded position, if that's what you chose. And give yourself time for your spine to start to straighten. And we'll pause in the aftermath of a yin posture where there might be, you know, a little bit of a fuzzy feeling or sleepy feeling. And then draw your knees together. If you're on your back, draw your knees together. You can stay like that or you can squeeze your knees in for a moment. We're gonna meet on our backs for our final yin posture. It's not as long of a hold because it's a little bit more, it takes a little bit more activity to do. It's figure four stretch. So coming onto your back, bend your legs, plant your feet. And again, low back um, tenderness, a blanket under there might help. We're gonna extend the right leg up to the sky and then bend the right leg, take the ankle to the top of the left thigh and then flex your toes back to your knee. So, this might be quite enough for you to hold this shape. You could take your right hand to the right thigh, inhale and exhale, gently press into the right thigh. So that'll be your shape. And then you can eventually just relax your elbow towards the floor, relax your shoulders and breathe here, keeping your right toes flexed to your knee. If you can or need to go a little deeper at any point, you can lift your left leg off the floor and interlace your hands around your left hamstring. And then because this is yin, I'll invite you to just let your left ankle relax and let your left heel drop towards your bottom. But your right toes are staying active. Right toes are staying at flex towards your knee. And then just try to relax your shoulders towards the floor as much as possible. And breathe here. Eyes open or close, that's always your choice. We're just noticing where you can find a sense of softening in this a little bit more active yin shape. So we need to you know, hold the leg and keep the toes flexed. But other than that, see if you can relax everywhere else. Relax your left leg, relax your shoulders, relax your back, your belly, your neck.
about 30 seconds left here. If your pinch released around your left leg and release your hands, release your left foot. Extend your right leg up to the sky together, release your right foot and take a breath or so here in, in between. And then as you're ready, extend the left leg up, bend your left leg, take the left ankle, you might help it there to the right thigh. The left toes really flexed back towards the left knee. And you can start by taking your left hand to the left thigh and gently pressing into your leg. So your arm will extend and then as you are holding, you can start to relax your left arm a little bit more. So staying there, or at any point, lift your right leg up off the floor and release your hands behind your right hamstring. And then let your right heel and leg totally relax. Yeah. But keep your left toes active and flexed. That's because that's what supports and protects the, the joint. And then soften as much as can be softened here as you're holding the shape. You can deepen your breath at any point. You can always sigh out of the mouth, sighing out of the mouth and sometimes release a lot of stagnant or stuck energy in the body. Staying in the sweetness of this moment, you lying on the floor, doing your yin pose. And see these sounds happening around you as a way to anchor yourself right here. You can count your breath in and out. About 30 seconds left here. You have your hands around your right thigh, release your hands, release your leg, extend that left leg up and release that foot and just take a moment here, a breath in the aftermath. We'll get ready for our final shape Shavasana, either laying flat on your back with your legs stretched out long, taking any props to support you under the knees, under the hip, or you can take uh, legs up the wall or legs up the couch or legs up the chair whatever you have available to you as your final pose as your shavasana so that's the invitation if you're going to a wall i'd recommend that you have something that you place it underneath your head underneath your hips you might drag your mat there um, up the couch up the chair whatever is accessible and doable for you 
we will finish with that restorative shape for Shavasana, lay flat. If you aren't familiar with getting up onto the wall, what you will do is sit any hip, doesn't matter which, facing as close as you can towards the wall, and then you'll swing the legs up. And then there's a little bit of like a shimmy option to get your hips to go right up to the wall. If they don't need to touch, it doesn't matter. You just get as close as you comfortably can. If you're on a couch or a chair or a bed, you can have your knees, you know, bent and relax your calves on the couch or chair or bed. Hands away from the body, or you can rest your hands at the body, whatever helps you keep you grounded at ease. So the meditative invitation here is to watch your breath and to notice the natural pauses that happen without you having to do anything at all. The natural pause that happens at the top of the inhale and at the bottom of the exhale. So every time you take a breath in, there's a pause that happens without our doing when the breath is still in the body. And then as you exhale, there's a pause that happens without our needing to do anything with the breath out of the body. So there's this moment where there's no breath in the body and the moment where the breath is sustained in the body. Stay with your breath for a few moments longer. And so we go gently out. So if you're on your back, you can stay as you are for a little bit longer. If you have your legs at the wall or something else, you can start to slide your knees in towards you like a passive 
need a chest pose. You don't have to hold your legs in, but maybe you just feel, feel so just let your knees passively be drawn in towards your chest. Wherever you are, creating little wiggles in your fingers or toes or rocking your head from leg to left. Because part of the practice is when we wake ourselves back up to our bodies, right? So the intention is, even though we might feel very much so in the, in the body, the intention is that we are temporarily letting go and bringing our awareness to our energy, and what is maybe beyond this existence that'll actually bring us more into living, more into our lives. And then slowly roll onto one side, whichever you prefer, curl your knees in close and maybe use your arm like a pillow. And so this pose is called fetal position and it represents an opportunity for rebirth at any point. And we'll slowly use our top hand to come back up into a seat. Take your time. I thought we would finish with one more round of that chant we started with. So we'll do it all together and finish with our own shanti. Take your time. When you're ready and you're, if you're already seated here, you can kind of just drop in, close your eyes. Using your hands in your lap or at your knees, taking Gaya and Mudra, or maybe bringing your hands to connect into your heart, wherever your energy is guiding you. And so we'll take that chant together one time, finishing with our own Shanti's. Let's take a breath in and out. Inhale. Asatoma satgamaya. Tamasoma joti gamaya. Mrecho horma amretam gamaya. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you all so much for your presence and your practice. Yes, Namaste. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Thanks for being here. Any questions, let me know. Um, there's no class in July because it's the 4th of July on that Monday, and um, but we will resume in August. And then I'm going to start thinking about bringing this back maybe a little bit more than once a month. But for now, that's what we're doing. So we hope to see you then. But oh my goodness, enjoy your July, I guess. <laughs> maybe I'll see you all before that. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.